Welcome to Chuck Builds. This is part two of my Proxmox series, and this is the video where I'm going to be installing Home Assistant onto the Proxmox. It is a rough cut in from the previous video that is already up on my channel. I didn't want to extend it because it was going to be just too long, and I had feedback on my channel that, that people wanted the videos to be shorter. So trying to do that, I'm editing right now. I'm going to try and make it make as much sense as possible. As always, the links will be in the description below, and let me know what you think. Before I go much further, I want to cover something that I should have covered in my last video about running these scripts, specifically the Proxmox VE helper scripts by TTECK. Do not just go around on the internet downloading and running random scripts without checking them out first. I've checked these out, I've read through them. They're benign, there's lots of people involved contributing. I've seen these recommended all over the internet, so I'm not just blindly found this the first link that I found and will execute it. For the sake of this video, these scripts really speed things up. I might do more in-depth videos in the future of how to install a VM without doing these scripts. I just wanted to make sure to call out that there, there was a certain level of discretion when choosing these and that you should be careful when running anything that you find randomly on the internet. I'm very confident that this is going to work for us here today, but in general, uh, exercise caution when doing so. Back to the video. So back to these helper scripts. I was not originally planning to do it this way, but I can't help but notice there's a home assistant option here. And I am going to use this script. So I'm going to copy my script here, and then I'm going to come over and paste it. And we'll hit enter and let it run. Um, yes, proceed. Sure, we'll use the default settings. I doubt there's anything too crazy in there. Uh, probably just allocating the minimums for RAM and CPU usage, but I believe we will be able to change that later if we need to. Oh, look at that, it's done. So after that's done, we have a little computer here in the corner saying uh, 100, which I think was what it called this VM. Um, Home Assistant OS is the notes. We can see our CPU usage, network traffic, and all of that. Let's see if we go to console, can we see it starting up? Yeah, waiting for the command line to be ready. This is just like if we had installed it onto a computer, but instead of looking at it on a monitor, we're looking at it through this virtual machine. So I'm gonna take this IP right here, 163, with our port 8123, and boom, we're into Home Assistant. I do want to reiterate one thing of I am very much a pro Home Assistant OS versus Docker. Um, for Home Assistant, I think it's great that everything's in one spot, your backups are all together. If you have hardware failure or you have an issue, it's all in one package. That one backup brings everything back online. Whereas if you were to spread this out on multiple Docker containers, on multiple machines, all in different versions, and something goes wrong, you might have an issue. Uh, you might not be able to restore one at a time. You might have just one thing not work that really slows you down. I think it's smart for me to keep all of my smart home stuff in one bundle that I can back up regularly and know that everything's there. I'm not really concerned about the space of it. I'm not really concerned about the resources of it, um, especially on a VM instead of the bare metal install of Home Assistant OS, we can really fine tune how much hardware resources we're giving it. I'm very pro Docker. I've got like 60 containers running on my other server. Most of them are not related to my smart home. Again, I would strongly suggest that you consider Home Assistant OS as your installation. So back over to Home Assistant, we have our option to create a smart home or restore from backup. I do have a backup. So I'm going to click upload and find it right here, Chuck Builds Backup, and I'll do a full backup. And it says this will take up to 45 minutes, so we'll be back. 
All right, we're back. And I thought it was taking a little too long. It said it was still processing. And I went and checked the performance page and I saw that it had pretty quickly dropped off on network traffic and CPU usage and disk read writes. And so I thought it might be done, but I wasn't sure. I gave it a few more minutes and then I pressed refresh and it popped right up to log in. So I'm going to log in with my credentials and boom, we're right back in it. Our add-ons from before are still here. Um, our node red is still here. Uh, the Zigbee to MQTT is gonna require an extra step though, because our Zigbee dongle is no longer straight into the machine. It's going into the machine to the Proxmox and then to a virtual machine. And so we gotta get it through this, this barrier here. It should be pretty easy. And I was clicking around while this was loading and I think I found it. And so I have my Zigbee dongle attached to the machine. So we're gonna come over here to PVE or the node that we're currently hosting Proxmox on. And I came down to the HAOS, the Home Assistant Operating System. And we'll click on that. And then I'll come down to hardware and I'm gonna click add. And then I'm gonna add a USB device. And then I'm gonna come down to USB vendor or device ID and I'm going to choose the Sonoff Zigbee dongle. And I'm gonna click add. That's right here is USB zero. And we'll come back to Home Assistant system and we'll do a restart. So I'm happy to report that a restart did fix it. Thankfully, uh, you know, the old adage of when in doubt, turn it off, turn it back on, and it did work. So I think that's great. I like that everything popped right back up, and this is a huge benefit to using Home Assistant OS is that everything's wrapped up in one. However, we still need to fix our settings here for Zigbee to MQTT to make sure that we're reaching the right device, the coordinator. And here we have it set to TTY USB zero. And the fact that it started up, I'm a little surprised here. Didn't really expect that. Uh, I thought we would have to point it towards the new Zigbee device. We've already added it here as USB zero, so maybe we don't need to. So, wow, I'm uh, pleasantly surprised. This is my Chuck Builds marked motion sensor came right online as soon as I pulled it out of the drawer. Closing thoughts, this might be the easiest way to install it that I've come across yet. I was a little hesitant to recommend Proxmox just because I haven't had all that much experience with it myself. If I were to start hosting some other services in Proxmox, which I hope to get to, it should be nice to be able to kind of share these resources and not be stuck on this Dell Optiplex of just hosting just Home Assistant, especially when it's not my everyday Home Assistant. This is just for these YouTube videos. Um, so pretty excited about this. Scripts worked exactly as they were supposed to. They worked so easy. We didn't have to go download any ISOs except for the first Proxmox one, but for Home Assistant, we didn't need to. Um, I didn't have to go find any weird things to copy and paste to get moved over from the enterprise to free version of Proxmox. There's lots, lots here. I think this is awesome. Would highly recommend going the Proxmox route. 